Welcome to BSRM Presents Straight Talk. This is Dhaka Tribune editor Zafar Subhan, and I'm joined in conversation today with Wendy Werner, who's the International Finance Corporation Country Manager for Bangladesh, Bhutan, and Nepal. Wendy, welcome to the show. Thank you, Zafar. Great pleasure to be here. Why don't we start for our audience with you telling us a little bit about the IFC and what exactly it is that it does here in Bangladesh and elsewhere. Great. So the International Finance Corporation is the private sector part of the World Bank Group. Okay. So we are basically owned by all of our shareholder countries, including Bangladesh, and we make uh, investments in the private sector, so both debt and equity investments, and we have an extensive program here in Bangladesh on private sector development and kind of advisory work that we do as well. We've invested um, around $1.5 billion over the last uh, three mm -hmm. years, and uh, we look to how our investments can really make an impact on, on development in Bangladesh, as well as make a profit. We're commercial financers. Right, and the difference between IFC and then the World Bank is the World Bank works largely with the Bangladeshi government, mm -hmm. and the IFC works directly with private organizations, private companies. Exactly, okay. exactly. And now, one of the reasons I wanted you on this show is um, beyond just talking about what the IFC does, I think this is a specifically good time to talk because there's been a launch of, I believe it's called the Bangla Bond, Absolutely. which has been um, floated on the London Stock Exchange, and it's the first of its kind here in Bangladesh. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how it operates and the significance of this launch? Absolutely. So the Bangla Bond was uh, listed on the uh, London Stock Exchange uh, on November 11th, just last week. Okay. And uh, it's um, the first time that we've issued, so it's an IFC bond, but it's denominated in Bangladeshi Taka. So okay. So it's a way for international uh, investors to directly take the Bangladesh risk, to take an investment in Bangladesh yeah. without having to do all the work of being onshore. Uh, yeah. That's one big um, positive. So it's big uh, for international investors to uh, get exposure to Bangladesh. It also enables uh, IFC particularly to do more uh, local currency, Taka denominated loans uh, here in Bangladesh, which means that uh, the companies that we would work with would not have to have any foreign exchange uh, risk. And so this, uh, this bond, it doesn't have any um, liability from the government side, mm -hmm. and uh, it reduces the, also the foreign exchange risk of the transactions uh, okay. on our side. And the risk is side. being taken by the borrower, by Exactly. The so the, yeah. um, the investors in the bond are yeah. taking the, the risk of the Bangladeshi Taka depreciation, appreciation, whichever way it goes, that's what they take, mm -hmm. along with IFC's uh, backing. So it's yeah. an IFC bond, and we're a AAA rated yeah. internationally. So it's a way of investing. Investors that, that know IFC but may not know Bangladesh to okay. really start to look at Bangladesh as an investable uh, opportunity. And is this a model which has been used elsewhere? Um, Absolutely. So IFC has issued um, local currency bonds in uh, 52 different currencies. Okay. And so it's a very um, kind of proven model. And we see that this uh, provides a lot of uh, interest from investors, particularly institutional investors, asset management companies. Mm -hmm. The same type of investors who are investing in all of those 52 currencies are the same ones investing in Bangladesh because they mm -hmm. want a diversified portfolio. Sure. They're usually going to be things like pension funds or other asset managers. Right. We've had quite uh, like very large success uh, with these operations, particularly just across the border. In India, it's called the Masala Bond. And uh, in the Masala Bond, we issued already $3 billion worth of Masala Bonds. And other issuers have also used the same structure that okay. IFC started. And there's been almost $4 billion that have been issued uh, by other issuers, like domestic co companies out of India and also state-owned companies. So we expect the Bangla Bond can get there one of these days. Okay. Okay. And uh, this is just a start, and we're really looking forward to expanding the market of investors. Okay, quick question. How come if this has been, you know, you've done similar facilities or have worked um, in other countries, why did it take so long here in Bangladesh? Were there some uh, hurdles which needed to be overcome first, or did, were there some uh, things which needed to be put in place before it was viable here in Bangladesh? Well, we have to be able to show that we can have a, uh, an extensive um, pipeline of investment. So mm -hmm. we have to show that we can do something with the, right. with the funds that we're sure. um, um, advertising offshore. And uh, we also do have to get uh, permissions in order to issue the bonds from the government, as well as to approve the various projects that are going to be funded by the bonds. So 
And yeah. we also want to make sure it's the right time in the market, right? Yeah. So market timing is very important. This is a, a very uh, competitive market in emerging market, frontier market investors. Sure. And Bangladesh is, is, a new, is a new market for them. Right. So we wanted to make sure all those pieces were in place. And I think they're coming together now. The fact that Bangladesh has such strong macro fundamentals, it's looking at many reforms. Uh, the doing business rating this year was uh, improved well, better. Yeah. much better. And, uh, you know, there's, they're progressing on a lot of reforms. These are all the right signals. Right, so that's a story investors. you can tell to the investors. Absolutely, you can take it to and that them, showed yeah. it showed in the in the bond. It was oversubscribed, so we okay. had more investors interested in buying the bonds than we were able to uh, to place. So that's why it's important that it's listed and and that it's a tradable bond, right? So that's okay. what really expands the market of funds that coming sure. to Bangladesh. In well, the I, mean, I think I think the real advantage is is the, the message it sends. You know, so we're starting. You said I think it's a ten million dollar bond, which is you know, is, is these things go fairly modest. You mentioned three billion of masala bonds have been. Um, issued in India, but presumably now using this as a model, uh, it can be replicated. So uh, are there more similar deals in the pipeline or will you wait and see for a few months? Or as you said, it's been oversubscribed, so maybe there's already interest perhaps. Absolutely. No, we'll definitely plan on uh, issuing more Bangla bonds uh, mm -hmm. just to kind of put all the pieces in place for a pipeline yeah. of projects. It'll probably take a few months, sure. um, but it's only uh, really a matter of, of getting those projects into the pipeline and, and ready to go. Yeah. Uh, so we expect probably to issue two to two hundred to three hundred million over the next year, okay, and wow, that's a um, lot. that yeah. will definitely increase uh, you know the market uh, penetration on on the investor side. And, and we expect that there is enough demand, uh, for sure, for that yeah, amount, and we seen. would you continue to grow. You see the demand is, is, is strong. Absolutely. Yeah. And, strong. and I guess the other part of it is you also have to find the right investment. So I think... Um, who is the ultimate recipient of these loans for this uh, this ten million dollar? Uh, right. Bond? So this uh, this first round, this first uh, round of bonds was uh, went to Pran RFL. Okay, so they, sure. we were able to do a Taka denominated loan to Pran. Mm -hmm. Pran is a longtime IFC client, so we're really yeah. pleased to be able to support, uh, especially their work on the supply chain and agribusiness. Is this for a specific project? Is it is it indexed to a specific project or just in general? Yeah, absolutely. All of our projects, we do have a specific when we're doing a, a loan. We yeah. have a specific project in a specific company. So this goes to mm -hmm. actually Natur Agro uh, within Pran. So it focuses on that agribusiness supply chain work. Of course, Pran has many products many. And, yeah. and many different things that they do. Um, but what's different here is that we are then able to provide a, a TACA loan to, to Pran, and we can do it now for our other clients too, when it makes most sense for them. Yeah. So if you're in power generation, you know, you get a, a, a you get a dollar denominated kind of power purchase agreement. So right. it's easy to take a dollar loan. If you're an RMG, you get export income. Yeah. So you can take a dollar loan. But when you're For looking at agribusiness yeah. or services, um, other domestic-oriented yeah. business, they wouldn't have the revenues in dollars. So we would like to be able to provide TACA-denominated loans. Uh, right. So this and in a way that they don't do have that. to, and they don't have to take any of that risk. You so they don't have to take the foreign yeah. exchange risk in these cases. So we'll continue to grow our, our dollar-denominated uh, loans as well as our TACA-denominated loans in the future. We need both of them mm -hmm. because we can provide longer tenor loans when it comes to uh, dollars and foreign currency. And we'll start, we have to kind of start a little bit smaller on the TACA denominator, but we'll be able to grow our tenors and, and make them longer in the future as well. So both okay. sides will be growing. Great. And you mentioned 100 or 200 million within the next year. So do you already have clients in, in projects kind of in the pipeline that you have identified and earmarked? I think you said on the investor side, there's no problem. So I guess the other challenge is then to find the right people to match them up with. Yeah, absolutely. So we expect, for instance, we want to be doing more in um, areas that are related to financial inclusion and uh, micro and SME um, uh, access to finance, as well as affordable housing. For instance, these are some of the areas that we expect to extend uh, TACA denominated loans in the coming year or so. Okay. Hold that thought, Wendy. We'll pick up the thread after the break. Please join us after the break. This is Straight Talk. Welcome back to Straight Talk. Now, Wendy, I think before the break we were talking about what impact this bond is going to have on the um, image of Bangladesh in international financial markets. Why don't you talk a little bit about that and how you're trying to, I guess, you know, sell Bangladesh to international investors? 
Well, as I said, I don't think Bangladesh was a hard sell at all, right? Okay. So we have uh, strong uh, macro fundamentals. This gets a lot of attention from investors, yeah. both uh, portfolio investors and direct investors. Mm -hmm. And um, we can see that uh, there is a significant investor interest. I think the challenge has been how do they actually invest in Bangladesh? So we right. need instruments. Need and that's platform, why yeah. the Bangla Bond is an excellent platform for those maybe who have seen the potential but are not ready to kind of come onshore in a direct yeah. investment or even as a portfolio investment, you know, domestically. So um, that's the power of the Bangla Bond. We're able to call on these capital of those who want emerging market exposure. Um, but I think we also need to see this as part of a continuum. It needs to be part of what can develop the capital markets here in Bangladesh as well. It needs to provide a way for um, domestic corporates to diversify the way that they fund their own operations. Too much bank funding is, is right. one of the challenges here. So we want this to open up uh, opportunities uh, for both offshore uh, debt, uh, I mean uh, bonds, and yeah. maybe onshore bonds as well. And okay. I think that will be part of the roadmap going forward. Well, no, I mean, it seems that there are many, many benefits. Then you know, it sort of touches on a lot of uh, a lot of areas in which uh, the economy can be uh, can be strengthened by investment. But let me ask you a little bit about this because one of the problems we faced here in Bangladesh is there has been a kind of a mismatch in terms of the strength of the economy and the foreign investment coming in. The economy has been growing very well, you know, for a long time now. Foreign investment is still relatively low. And um, why or how has that has that been over the few years, do you think? Yeah, so I think FDI has been a challenge for uh, Bangladesh. Um, when we taking from the point of view of a financial investor, um, I can tell you that we need to see projects that are well structured uh, yeah. on a commercial basis. We need to see um, things like compliance fully in place and transparency and governance. All of these things are the important parts uh, of of any project, no matter what the sector, um, as well as for those investors who might be looking at equity stock market investments. Right. So I think some of those things are uh, where Bangladesh still needs to focus its, its attention on really kind of the pipeline of investable projects when it comes to FDI. Now, many of the policy parameters are broadly in place, the ability to repatriate funds. Um, but I think it's, as anyone working here in Bangladesh could say, you know, there's still some bureaucratic challenges of the day in, day out uh, sure. ability to implement those policies. Yeah. So I think that's some of the things that we can improve on. And I think there's quite a bit of improvements that have been in the works. There's a new one-stop shop that's been done, which right. will also help um, both foreign and uh, domestic investors. And some of the improvements improvements on doing business uh, this year, I think are also like the indicator that the government is moving in the right direction to simplify approvals and to make the implementation of these policies uh, more robust. Yeah. Do you think there's also been too much of a um, uh, too much of the uh, the government kind of focusing on trying to attract non-resident Bangladeshi investors to the exclusion of other investors and maybe they would be better served by broadening their outlook? Well, I think the government could, um, you know, probably do, again, a, a more intensive efforts on really mm -hmm. trying to attract uh, FDI, in particularly giving more information about the sector opportunities, what's the regulatory structure. We have very valid questions that come around, what's the overall strategy? So if you're looking right. at... Um, you know, whether it be logistics or if you're looking at, um, you know, light manufacturing, what's the long-term strategy of the government is a question that investors ask. Um, and so I think there has been some interest in bringing in non-resident Bangladeshi NRB investment, which is not a bad source of investment for mm -hmm. sure. But where we really are going to be able to bring in the big investors who have new technology and new uh, new um, kind of additions to the economy is going to be outside of those circles. Okay, big, big institutions investors with huge pools of cash just waiting to be invested. Well, no, I mean, that's, I think in the Bangla Bond, the example yeah. here is that these are institutional investors. Yeah, that's the they point, are right? people that don't have exposure to Bangladesh. We're more likely to get NRBs who are investing maybe in more direct, like there are government securities, for instance, or even direct investments themselves. Um, and that's a great source, but we want, we need more than that. And we see a lot of investors from uh, East Asia as well, very interested in, in Bangladesh, uh, the Singaporeans, of course, Indians, uh, you know, even Malaysians, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on and on. So yeah. there's certainly no dearth of, of investors in, who are interested. Investors. And I think, I mean, for us, perhaps we always look across the border to India. You know, I think India has a very robust relationship with non-resident Indians 
um, investing, and maybe that's kind of a model we've thought of trying to replicate here. But I think perhaps also there's a misconception there. I mean, I'm not sure. Maybe India is more open to foreign investment than we're aware of. Well, I think um, I mean India has its challenges on foreign direct investment as well. I wouldn't uh -huh. say it's the it's the gold standard, but um, definitely they have they have I think have a lot more for financial intermediation for non-resident Indians. But it's yeah. certainly not the only source. We've sure. seen in recent years they've opened up even very closed markets like retail uh, yeah. to to foreign investors um, and even the e-commerce space we see it going on right now. So I think I think the real boon is when you bring in those who are not uh, you know your your nationals, right? You're really going to expand um, the opportunities, and that will bring in both the capital, but also new ideas, new technology uh, to really move uh, move okay. us forward. Now, just moving, shifting gears a little. How long have you been here working with the IFC in Bangladesh? Uh, four years now. Okay. So what are the biggest changes you think you've seen in the four years? So when you're sitting down, you're talking to investors, and you're you know giving them the the pitch about Bangladesh. What can you tell them? Look, when I was here four years ago, this is what it was, and here we are now, and this is the real distance which the country's managed to traverse in this time. Yeah, I've seen a big uptick in uh, international investors, um, different developers in different sectors who mm -hmm. are continuing to look at, at Bangladesh, um, but becoming much more active in, in putting their projects together. Um, I think we also see that um, the government has done well in certain sectors, like the power sector is, sure, is very well right. structured, um, and trying to use the power, the power generation example in other sectors is mm -hmm. where we can see that there's been quite a bit of movement. Uh, we also are, were investors in the very first offshore LNG terminal, so mm -hmm. that was an example. Although maybe if you're not in in the in the infrastructure space, it sounds similar, but mm -hmm. actually it was adapting something from electricity yeah. to gas. They're very different markets, so I think that. That adaptab adaptability um, is is a very strong uh, trait, and I think everyone is usually once they come, once they see those you know growth numbers, and then they come and try to look at how to invest here. They're very impressed by the dynamism, the entrepreneurship. You know, e the RMG sector continues to kind of innovate and and really be right up there um, at the top of the global market, and uh, that is getting a lot more attention. I don't mm -hmm. think necessarily maybe the fundamentals of Bangladesh changed in the last four years, but maybe mm -hmm. the attention we're able to bring okay. uh, in, in the international space uh, has and, changed. And well, and that's something, that's, that's a, big, um, a big goal of actually floating this bond. What other sectors? You mentioned the RNG sector. You said you've also been working in terms of uh, infrastructure, energy, um, uh, electricity development, gas. What other in, uh, uh, specific sectors do you think are very promising here in Bangladesh, which you talk well, about? Well, obviously, we have a huge domestic market, 165 million people. Yeah. So how to um, bring better services, more efficiency, particularly for the domestic market, but that will extend to you know export potential. So I think we definitely need to see more diversification in the mm -hmm. export markets. Yes. And uh, that will, I hope, come uh, as we, uh, again, bring in more foreign direct investment that will help us diversify and exports. Um, we also personally in IFC um, do want to do quite a bit more in the domestic side, um, mm -hmm. looking at health services, for instance, uh, looking at agribusiness, uh, agro-processing. All of these bring real um, you know, dividends for everyday people. And that's really what IFC is about. Development really is at the heart of our investment strategy. Right. So talk, could you talk a little bit about one or two other um, investments you've made? Because I think it's important for people to understand that, as you say, of course, you know, IFC is making money because you know, it's loaning it. It wants to make uh, it, it wants to make money on the loans, but at the same time, you probably have a fairly stringent requirement in terms of the kind of project you will invest in. You're not going to invest in just anything, right? Absolutely. So uh, yeah, we do. I mean, all of our projects have to be commercially oriented projects, but um, we've done quite a bit of interesting uh, work. Uh, we've done recently an investment in. Uh, Golden Harvest, which is a, right. does a lot of food processing, but yeah. this is actually setting up a completely new entity, a third-party logistics focused on cold chain. So this is a way that we can um, provide the enabling infrastructure to improve uh, agribusiness, to improve the ability for farmers to get the most from their products, yeah. and also to look at other export sectors and improve efficiency. We have a lot of losses in Bangladesh just because of inefficiencies in logistics um, or post-harvest handling, post handling of agri products. 
products. So um, this is actually going to be kind of a quasi an equity investment okay. because it's a new entity. So again, that's where we're trying to bring in innovative, both financial instruments as well as in new sectors of the economy. We also do quite a bit with the financial uh, sector. So we are invested with a lot of banks. And uh, we've also done, for instance, a line with Brack Bank. Brack Bank is a long-term client mm -hmm. um, that's focused on women-owned SMEs. So okay. we provide uh, kind of special incentives for them to grow their uh, their portfolio of SMEs that are owned by women. And uh, after that, we, we help them to improve the products that are oriented towards those women. And now the Brack Bank has a Tara product, which is really okay. focused on women. And it's been very, very successful. In fact, I, I recently had the opportunity to meet quite a few of the of the SMEs and the entrepreneurs that have benefited from the from the program, and it was quite inspiring. I mean, many of them are small, very small uh, entities, so even doing a lot of e-commerce and okay. things like this. So, what is that product, the Tara product? If you could, um, so Tara that is a kind bit. of a suite of products. It's mm -hmm. uh, basically taking the existing financial products of Brack Bank and orienting them more towards the needs of, of women uh, women borrowers, right? Okay. Women owned SMEs. Okay. Um, so customizing. So it it's for a little women. bit more customized yeah. to what they mm -hmm. might need. For instance, um, I know one of the things they're looking at is, uh, you know, trying to have, even for an entrepreneur, right, someone who owns their own business, they're the ones taking the loan. They're taking all of that liability. Yeah. But, you know, they still have a, a personal life. They still have a family life. So even being able to give them a maternity break in their SME loan, I mean, that's quite right, that's innovative. Deal, yeah. I mean, it would be, I think, really help more uh, women take on uh, take on the loans they need to grow their business. Yeah. Um, quite innovative. And I think we've also, uh, they've also been working with a, a new company called ShopUp, which is a really interesting, innovative company, looking at um, kind of Facebook and how the data side can be help build the credit um, scoring. So innovative ways to evaluate credit helps open um, access to finance for women. Okay. Well, on that note, thank you so much, Wendy. I've really enjoyed this. We've learned a lot about how the IFC operates here in Bangladesh. We've actually learned a lot about the Bangladesh economy and how investment here works. And of course, we've learned a lot about the Bangla bond and how that's going to help us move forward. Thank you so much. Great pleasure to be here, Zafar. Thanks. And thank you. This has been BSR and Presents Straight Talk. I am Zafar Subhan. I've been in conversation with Wendy Werner, IFC Country Manager. Please join us again two weeks from today. Thank you very much. I am Sam.